If you don't understand leverage, then in my opinion, you don't understand business. Now, before I knew about the things I'm going to talk about in this video, I f fully was convinced that whoever had the highest hourly wage rate, so for example, the doctors and the lawyers of the world, they're the richest. Now, they're the ones with the most money. They're the ones with the most wealth. And obviously, if you're someone who's like looked into wealth and riches and stuff like this, you know that this is not true. But genuinely, a few years ago, I thought that these were the richest people in the world. And it was because they had the highest hourly wage rates. So like I said, if you don't understand leverage, then you don't understand business. And before I learned all this stuff that I'm going to share with, in, with you in this video, then my life was completely different. And this honestly changed the way I look at life and the way I look at business specifically. So Naval talks about these four types of leverage. And if you know Naval, you will know how trustworthy and predominant he is in the space but i've literally just got this straight from the vowel but actually incorporated it into my life and i'm going to try to explain to you like the kind of bro science way of it not so much bro science but just kind of in the language that you would probably understand because the way he talks about it is quite sophisticated although he does a good job of telling stories and stuff to relate Maybe if it comes from me, you understand a little bit better and maybe you haven't seen him talk about these stuff. So I'm able to share with you the four types of leverage. Now, leverage essentially is just where your output doesn't proportion it to your input. Now, let me explain what I mean by this. Say, for example, you work a job for a company and your hourly wage is £20 an hour, say, for example. You could put in one hour of work and get £20. You can put in five hours of work and get £100. But whatever the input is you put into that, so X amount of hours, is proportionate to the X amount of pounds that you would receive for those hours. You know, you're guaranteed £20 an hour. So if you put in 10 hours, you get £200. If you put in two hours, you get £40. Simple enough, right? Now, with leverage... Your output does not match your input. And I'll go into further detail and explain what this means, but just know for now that your output does not have proportionate returns to your input, and that is what leverage can do for you. So just quickly, I've got a like seven step guide to literally destroy bad habits within a week. I use these seven steps and got rid of 95% of my bad habits within a week. So if you want to check that out, if you think that that would interest you, then it'll be in the in the description. But if you don't want to check it out, then it's fine. It's completely a free guide. You just need to put your email in and so I can give you the code so you can get it for free. Otherwise you may have to pay for it, but it's like a private video and uh, pretty much a full lecture on how to destroy bad habits in a week. But get on to the video you actually want to watch. The first type of leverage is capital. Now, capital essentially is just using other people's money to uh, amplify your returns. So let me give you an example. If, say, you're an investor and you have £100, I've used simple terms because I could do the maths in my head. So you have £100 and you know this investment in one year will give you a 10% return. So you put your £100 that you have, which is your equity, which is the money you have, into this investment and then within one year you get 10 percent returns you get 10 pounds profit 10 pounds nice now on the other hand if you wanted to use leverage capital leverage then you could go to someone who has a large amount of funds and you could say okay i'm going to borrow a thousand pounds off this person so you'd borrow a thousand pounds off this person and with your 100 pounds as well on top that's 1100 pounds Come on, keep up with me now. In one year's time, you'll get a 10% return on that, which is £110. So using other someone else's money 
you've gone from having a return of £10 to a return of £110. Now, obviously, you need to pay back um, some sort of interest on the loan, but as long as the interest is less than the returns, then you're going to be making a higher profit with other per people's money than just on your own. So you see where this leverage kind of comes in, and, and this is what I mean by amplifying returns. So whereas the £100 on your own, if you just invested your own £100, you'd get a £10 return. Whereas using leverage with your £100 that you have, you still only have £100, but because you're using leverage, so someone else's money, you're getting a higher return and a higher profit, therefore. However, I need to note on this, when it comes to leverage, when I say your outputs are amplified, this doesn't just mean wins, it also means losses. So just be careful and be wary about that because you're, if your wins are amplified, then your losses are also amplified and there's more risk that goes with leverage. Um, so just take that into consideration. Now the second type of leverage is labor. And this is probably the most common uh, type of leverage. You probably understand this one well. So just a quick example, say for example, you can chop down one tree in an hour. I don't know if you can chop down a tree in an hour. I don't know how long it takes to chop down a tree. I've never done it, but just hypothetically, you chop down one tree in an hour. But then you realize that if you get four of your buddies in, you could chop down five trees in an hour. You know, each of you doing a tree in the hour. So you put in the same amount of input, which is one hour, but again, five times the return. Now, obviously, you need to like pay these with some sort of incentive or money or whatever it is but this is using leverage so your input you still put an hour in and you're getting five times the return comprende now the third type of leverage is uh, code so this is using some sort of like technology or computerized code to amplify returns now, to give an example of this, I'm again going to use like an investment example because I think it's quite easy to understand, maybe. But say now you develop a code or you practice learning a code or you buy someone's code off them, then you're going to implement this code and it will trade securities on the stock market for you automatically. So if a stock goes to a certain price, it'll automatically buy. And if it goes to a certain price, it'll automatically sell this sort of um coding will do it automatically for you so in terms of the input in this you obviously need a lot of upfront input so to learn the code or um, maybe capital to buy the code and you need a lot of hours and money to actually start this code and get it up and running but once it's up and running then it'll give you 24 7 returns so you could have zero input once it's up and running. So you could be sleeping and the code could still be running on your on your software and giving you returns. And this is the type of leverage. So you'd have zero input because you'd be sleeping, but the code would still be running and still making you profits by trading automatically. So this is using the coding type of leverage to amplify your returns disproportionately to your input. Now the fourth type of leverage is content. So obviously you're watching this YouTube video, this is content. And the best way to describe this is, again, like code, you put an upfront sort of cost in. So obviously it's taken me time to learn these sort of things. It's taken me time to write a script and plan the video, actually record the video, upload the video. That's taken like time and money and stuff like this. But as soon as this video is uploaded, the returns on it, obviously, I'm not saying it's going to get like 10 billion views, but the returns on it are technically infinite. So it could be running just in the background and with the views and stuff like this, it would continuously keep giving me an output, even though I put no more input into it. But on the same side of that, it could absolutely flop and get zero views. And therefore, all my input on the front end would have gone to kind of like waste because I wouldn't have had the output. 
I would have been better putting that input into something else to get a better output. But this is what I mean by leverage having um, amplified returns, so positively and negatively. So you could put, for example, if you're a software developer, they could put months and months of research and time and effort and money into developing a software and it could absolutely flop. So they put all that upfront input in and their returns are zero. So their returns are amplified to zero. Whereas on the other hand, they could put months of work in and then this code or this software could run for years and make them like billions and billions of, of dollars. And therefore the returns are amplified in a positive way. So a way to apply these four leverages into your business or your life. I'm going to use an example of just like a general contractor because my grandfather is kind of like a contractor. He's self-employed and he works for himself, but it's kind of what I understand. So and I think you'd give a good example. So for example, my grandfather now, he could work X amount of hours and get paid X amount of dollars, whatever he he charges you know, I don't know his his rate or whatever um, but he charges X amount of money for the X amount of hours he puts in so that's no leverage at all that's just input output proportionate so if you wanted to apply uh, labor leverage then you could maybe take on an apprentice or someone to work with him and therefore he'd get more output for the same amount of hours obviously you need to pay this apprentice and stuff like that but it'd be the same amount of hours he would be putting in personally but the output would be higher because he's got an apprentice with him doing the work and maybe he'll have to train him up front and this is the upfront input but after he's trained and he has all the knowledge he can go on to do like jobs for himself and work for himself and my grandfather can just take like a cut of what he does and all this sort of stuff so that would be using labor as leverage the next one is capital so maybe say for example uh, there's a house that my grandfather knows will appreciate in value or it's a rundown house and my grandfather wants to kind of uh, renovate it to do it up and sell it for a profit he could take on a loan from a bank um, to just get some capital leverage and obviously he'd have to pay interest back to the bank once he sold the house but if the interest different that is different from the profit he re he returns from the house then he'll make money he'll make profit and that's using capital as leverage because he wouldn't have been able to uh, purchase the house uh, with just the capital he has so he has to borrow some of his capital he then does the house up sells the house so this is all the input and then the output is the profit and that's kind of the leverage using someone else's his capital which you wouldn't have being able to do with his own capital now the third type of leverage is code so you could maybe have some sort of code running that automatically buys products on a website or automatically send an email out or a message out to um, someone selling materials and stuff if it goes below a certain price or if there's a new um, high demand product and you could automatically purchase that product using a bit of code and he could either go on to sell this material or use this material in his um, in his work to therefore you know amplify the returns and get a profit another way of thinking about code is maybe like machinery and stuff like this i know it's not so much code but it is still leverage so whereas him just like trying to knock it knock a wall down with just a sledgehammer compared to using i don't know what machine they use to knock wall down a bulldozer if he had a bulldozer he'd be knocking walls down a lot more efficiently than he would with just using a sledgehammer in his two hands so that's sort of like code or technology or machinery leverage and the final one is content so i mean i don't know if he would do this but this is just a hypothetical example and <laughs> he could maybe you know upload uh, his work before and after pictures to social media he could uh, get customers and get leads through this social media and he could also you know post like videos or information or anything on social media just produce some sort of content 
that would give him returns on top of what he actually does anyway. So this would be working like in the background for him and maybe it would lead to uh, like people contacting him for more work or uh, investors wanting to get involved or some sort of stuff like this, just opening doors of new opportunities through using content as leverage. So once you understand these four types of leverages and how you can apply them into your life, then I genuinely think that you look at like business and life completely differently. I hope I've given you some value here because this was really valuable to me. Again, check out Naval if you don't know who he is. And if you do know who he is, then keep listening to him because he's got loads of stuff that is very valuable. Have a good day, King.